Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video about the iNav setup on this flight controller here. This is the new all-in-one from Team Black Sheep and I have set it up. It has the GPS installed, it has a receiver, we have the motor plugged in, it has the cables ready for the HDFPV system and it, there are helpful files on the TBS website. There's both a manual and also a default file that you can download and this is ready now to put inside the TBS Chapito. Now this is the plane that I'm currently building out with this thing and there is the perfect spot for it here at the back. So this is going to eventually end up in the next video kind of sat there with everything installed. However, the way I like to do these things, for those of you that watch the channel a lot, is you will know that the way I like to do it is I like to set it up on the bench, have it all working, the GPS locking, the receiver working fine, the ability to run the motor, all those things are tested so that when I put it into the model, if then something subsequently doesn't work, I know it's probably because I've plugged this cable into the wrong place. Now, the cables that I got with this unit uh, were kind of pre-production cables. They weren't exactly the same as stuff in production. So just be aware, some of the cable colors may be slightly different. But what I thought I'd do is kind of show you, first of all, time codes down below, of course, how I've connected all this stuff up, where you plug it in and how the wires go everywhere. And then also we'll jump on the computer and I'll show you the iNav configuration. Again, there is that default you can download and install onto the flight controller. Uh, I've gone through that. And once I've done the maiden with this wing and I've got it all flying, I will share my default of how I've got it set up. I will take out things like the accelerometer calibration and stuff. So you can just kind of flash it and load it on to yours and it will kind of work in the same way. So let's get onto the bench and let me show you how everything's connected. And then we can have a look at iNav. So let's very, very quickly start with a quick overview of the flight controller before we get into how I've connected everything up here. I have a GPS installed receiver. We have the uh, remote auxiliary USB box. We also have the cables here ready for my HDFPV system. And we have a spare connection here, which is actually for CAN bus. We have the power at the front that comes installed. And we also then have the PWM connections out the back for the servos, but also for things like your VTX and camera and another UR as well. And we have the connection for the motor out here in the back. Inside this little box, this is a H743 processor. It has a IMU inside here, of course, barometers in here as well. It'll run from 3 to 6S. However, I've heard of people running it on 2S as well without a problem. BC battery voltage is configurable on the outputs for your servos. It can be 5, 6.2, 7.2, and 8.4 volts output here at the back, all at 5 amps. There's also a 5 volt 1 amp setup in here as well. 7 UART, not all of them are presented. I'll show you that in a minute. Two I squared C ports. Uh, the big one, of course, is here by the side of the GPS. However, I'm not using it for this. This does have both iNav and RDU Pilot targets. Weight is about 51 grams. This is a plastic enclosure rather than metal. Uh, you'll see here that I've actually clipped off the two ends. The, they're actually scored. Hopefully you can see that on camera. So if you just put a pair of pliers and kind of bend them, they'll snap off. Uh, for installation into the new TBS wing, it's just worthwhile taking those off. It means it just slides home. Black box is in here as well. Um, then we also have on-screen displays built in. Six servo outputs. The size is 59 by 63 by 22.4 millimeters. Underneath here, there's actually the ESC. And if you undo these four screws, you can see here that we actually have the ESC that you can get into. It kind of is replaceable and you can also use it with external ESCs as well. However, the whole point of this is that it comes ready to go with all of the pieces that you need. The ESC inside here is running AM32 firmware. Input voltage is rated at three to six S. Current is rated at 40 amps from what I can see on the specs. I've read different things, 30 and 40 amps, but for a small wing, that's easily going to be lots. Um, it's soldered to the flight controller, as you just saw, about five grams of weight for the ESC. Um, does have an MR30 connector, which is what this connector is at the back. If I wiggle out the motor, it's nice and tight, which is how we want it to be. You can see here that the MR30, it's kind of like a little XT style XT30 connector, but it has three connections, one of which is polarized. And just by plugging the motor in like that, we have everything set up. 
post calls a D-Shot 300 and 600, and it is gonna provide ESC telemetry back to the flight controller as well. So let me go through how I have wired all this up, because it's taken me a little bit of time to figure it out. Um, but actually it's getting better all the time in the manual. But let me show you with the use of a little diagram how it's all gone together. We'll start with this one. This is the simple USB and buzzer board. This has USB-C. It also has the buzz on and off switch. Boot button's also here. By default, it's connected to this port at the side using these long cables that you get as part of the kit. This is way too long for my needs. So there are solder pads here at the back. So what I've done is I have actually clipped and soldered the wires onto there so that it's exactly the right length. When it's in the wing, I just want this by the side so I can plug it in. Next one to talk about then is the GPS. Now this is the GPS that was supplied with the kit. This is the M10 based GPS, goes into the GPS port at the side. The GPS port at the side is actually six pins. It also has the two I squared C inputs for an external compass. If you are going to be using this with RG Pilot, I would strongly recommend setting up a compass and making sure that uh, any external compass GPS unit is mounted well away from interference. I'm setting this up with iNav, so I'm not using an external compass. I don't care about it. It can go pretty much anywhere. So I've just installed it at 5 volts, ground, and then connected the TX6 and RX6 pins into the GPS. Now, again, don't forget, you the transmit pin on the flight controller goes to receive pin on the GPS and vice versa. Again, I just clipped the ends off and soldered them onto the pads at the back. Just means that I can have the cable exactly the right length. I'm probably gonna put my GPS somewhere like that when it's inside the model. It can just sit on top of the flight controller. Next one to talk about then is the receiver. Now there are two options for receivers and we'll go through both of them. This is your standard CRSF setup. So this is actually an RP3 receiver from Radio Master, but it could be a Crossfire or Tracer, anything that talks something like CRSF, that's what this receiver port is set for. Again, it goes five volts ground, RX4 and TX4. Don't forget to swap over the transmit pin on the flight controller to the receive pin on the receiver. So that means that UR4 is going to be used for the receiver if you're gonna be using CRSF. However, there is also an additional input here on the VTX, we'll get to it in a minute. There are two unused pins that I'm not using here because I'm using Walksnail that's a ground and S bus input. So if I was going to use an S bus receiver, I would use those two cables into my S bus receiver and borrow a five volts or probably off one of these rails to run that receiver as well. So there's that other option. That's actually going to be UART1. But for most pilots, I imagine these days building this thing, we're gonna be using UART4 set up as CRSF. And again, we'll show all that stuff in a minute. So that brings me on to the HDFPV unit. Now, uh, this port here has six cables. We have a voltage and we also have a ground, which the way I do it is I terminate it in a JST lead that connects into my HDFPV system so I can move it around from model to model because I don't like kind of committing 170, 200 pounds worth of HD system into every model that I have. I'm quite frankly, I think that's a bit crazy. Uh, the next two wires then are the UART3 transmit and receive pair. The way I do it, that for me goes into some kind of um, servo connector like that. On the HD FBV system, I have the similar side and I can plug it in and make the receive and transmit connections. The reason I do it that way is so that if I actually get it wrong, not only can it be unplugged and taken out of the model for something else, but if I've got it the wrong way around, I can just flip it over. And because it's on the two outside pins, then that's gonna work great. Again, the other two pins here on this particular port that I'm not using are RX1 and ground, and those two could be great if you're gonna be using it with something like SBUS. The other connector on here that isn't connected to anything, this is a CAN bus port, uh, less useful currently on something like iNav, but incredibly useful for something like RD Pilot. You can connect this up to some kind of CAN bus hub and then connect many, many peripherals, sensors, LIDARs, airspeed sensors, all kind of funky stuff that RD Pilot will support via that connection. The support for CAN stuff is getting better and better all the time in iNav, but at the moment, I'm not gonna connect anything there. I'm happy with that. So the only thing, other thing I'll mention is that there 
is the option to turn the power on and off to the HD FPV system via a logical switch inside the flight controller. I love this idea. So by setting up mode user one and setting up pin IO one underscore pin equals PD10 inside iNav, we can actually turn the power on and off to the HDFPV system. So that means that you could have all this plugged in. You could plug it in, wait for the GPS to lock and only when you're ready to fly, flick that switch and then activate it. And that's a really, really cute idea. It's also a feature that's available in Audio Pilot as well. So that means that the UART in this thing, and we'll jump on iNav in a moment, needs to be set up as if you're using SBUS, then you're going to set the serial receiver to be UART1. UART2 is going to be used for the VTX, or it's spare if you're not using an analog VTX. Those are the pins at the very end. Then UART3 is going to be set up for HDFPV display port for whichever system you're using, whether that's the DJI systems, Walksnail, HD0, whatever. UART4 is going to be set up for the receiver and configured for CRSF for most pilots, I would imagine. UART5 is kind of not presented anywhere. UART6 is going to be for the GPS unit. And then UART7 is going to be set up for the ESC telemetry. I may or may not set mine up. I'll see how I feel about that. And then UART8 is kind of a spare one. So now we know that, we can actually show you how it's all set up inside iNav. So here we are on the desktop in iNav. It comes free, free flashed with iNav 8. I'm just going to plug it in via the USB cable. We have the telemetry connected to the radio. We have the COM port that appears and I'm going to hit on connect. And here we are connected to the flight controller. If I move it on the bench, everything is working. So everything looks really good. Uh, we have the status. Calibration is something that you need to go through. Uh, it may be when you plug it in, it's going to ask you which is the receiver uh, UART and which is the or the UARTs for things like your GPS and things. Uh, just to answer as we've just looked at, it's going to be UART 6 and UART 4 really, I think. So um, once you've done that, you're going to have to then calibrate the accelerometer as you would expect. Mixer. Now this is a slightly weird one on here, only because the way it's set up is the servos are set up. And the way this works is that there is a default file that you can get from Team Black Sheep to load onto here. And when it's loaded, it'll kind of set a lot of these things up for you. Normally S1 and S2 on a flight controller like this would be something like the motors. However, it's moved everything around because S7 is actually connected to the internal ESC. So we need that set up as motor one, which it is. So that means that servo one and servo two are on S1 and S2. So that means that timer three, as you can see here, is set for servos and timer four over here is set for motors set up as a wing and then we have stabilized roll and pitch now by default the way that the configuration from team black sheep is set up it drops these weights down a little bit i've put them back up to 100 because i'm going to do that in the next video when we actually install it into the model and set the movement of the controls so that it's what tbs recommend so that's one slightly unusual thing with this all in one with the motor being over here again if he's running external esc then you would wouldn't really worry too much about that in terms of the outputs uh, esc protocol is going to be set to dshot 300 um, the servo refresh rate is set higher than this by default by the Team Black Sheep default set to 330. I've dropped it to 160. Um, I don't think we need it quite that high. Uh, we have got it set to stop motors on throttle. We can see here that outputs one and two are going to be the servos. Um, and as you can see here, they're kind of moving around the servos as I move the flight controller because by default it's in a stabilized mode. Ports, again, this hopefully shouldn't look too difficult for you. Um, so. We have MSP set for UART1. We have uh, the MSP display port is UART3. Serial receiver is UART4, and that's gonna be set for CRSF. And nice thing about this is that all the peripherals are powered by the USB port on this all-in-one, which I really like. It means that the radio has a connection. Then we have the GPS on UART6. I haven't yet set up the ESC telemetry. I might, actually turn it on um, 
after this video, we'll, we'll kind of see what, what mood I'm in. Configuration looks like this. We are using the virtual pitot tube, so it's picked up the accelerometer and the barometer. I2C speed is set to 400K, but we're not using that. Voltage and current sensor settings are set as this. That is from the default from TBS. I have turned on permanently enable launch mode fixed wing, which is the way that I do it here. And once I know the battery size that I'm gonna be using, I am gonna put in the capacity in here. Fail safe is set to return to home. Tuning, uh, probably gonna have a bit of a play with this. I have loaded this stuff in from the settings from the team black sheet file, but I'll probably do my own stuff. Similarly with the advanced tuning, I have set the fixed wing auto launch settings to be more what I like. So I've dropped down the launch throttle a little bit from the maximum it was from the team black sheep settings. I don't think it's gonna to need to be that unless you build this um, chapito to be very, very heavy. Receiver, well, it kind of works exactly as expect. I have the radio over here by the side of me. Everything is working. Uh, set to serial CRSF, and that is fab. Modes, nothing really exciting in here. I have this set up as I set up all of my iNav wings. The only difference is I have set user one to be on all the time, just so that the power for the VTX unit is going to be enabled all the time while I do my configuration. I might tweak this later so that it only gets turned on. And that is the GPS getting a lock, which is pretty good because I'm inside, uh, when I, uh, I'm kind of on the model. GPS, as you've just heard, is good, locked and loaded. We have everything blue, and then we have the on-screen display. Again, by default from the TBS stuff, it's set for the current one that I've just downloaded, BF43 Compact, which is not what I'm using here. I'm gonna be using Warts now, so I've set it for good old Avatar, uh, which is what we need. Uh, we could turn the preview guides on so you can see that everything is safe. This is a pretty standard layout for me and I have saved it. So if we go now into the status, we should see here on the right hand side, we have a full set of green ticks. That means that the INAF stuff is all ready to rock and roll. And I'm kind of ready to put this inside the wing, which is going to be the next video. So with it all wired up and the I now have basics done. It's ready to plug into the Chapito and to do all of that settings. The only other thing I'm going to need here, which comes as part of the production unit, which doesn't part of mine, is two little extension cables that go from S1 and S2, which are the two servos out in the wing, come up here at the side so you can plug those wings in and out easily when the flight control is installed and take them off. I'm going to make those up now. And then in the next video, we can put it inside the Chapito, finish all the configuration and testing, and then it'll be ready to maiden. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Payland360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.